take this opportunity to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. I think everybody's focused on the wrong stuff when it comes to Hylion. I really do. And good on me for coming on and sharing my perspective. I could be dead wrong. All right. There's a lot of people that seemingly have this thing, you know, licked. They, they, they know exactly what to focus on. Focusing on short-term stuff. I think there's a real disconnect between analysts and what they value in the short term and preparing a thesis that fits their agenda. Okay. And for me, they've lost all credibility. It's done. Stock market has changed so much in the way that we invest in the way that we need to analyze companies, um, the way that certain companies don't even need to be analyzed anymore. I, you know, tripping and falling into Johnson and Johnson is easy. I, you don't, you don't need to go through some sort of deliberation. Do it if that's what you want. If you enjoy stock market investing as much as me, um, you could probably justify uh, those means to an end. With Hylion, it's as if there's two schools of, can of, of thought here. In this video, I'm going to jump into the newest investor presentation because I think People got way, way too caught up in this short-term numbers. Are they going to beat the numbers? Are they going to provide revenue? How many units are sold? That stuff is going to be applicable down the line when there can be some predictable measure applied to the company. But this company is growing on all facets, okay? They're building the resources. They're building the business. They're building the personnel. They're building the trucks, solidifying resource within the company. So many different phases of this storming of team building and dynamic that Hylion is going through right now. What the analysts are focusing on right now, and they're being given some credit in the YouTube community for being right. Um, I'm going to say that that's a bunch of BS. That is this such bullshit. It's not even funny. Here's the thing. They'll be right until they're proven wrong, and then they'll move on to something else. That's what they do for their living is analyze stock and look to put together a thesis that meets the narrative for a, an undetermined amount of time. And what I mean by that is they'll be right on Hylion until they're wrong. So it's a situation where they're in a win-win situation because while they're being proven right, they can say, hey, look at this. And then when they're not right anymore, they can look back over the time of substantiation and building the thesis, that of which is somewhat fact-based, but it's a convenient interpretation of a company that doesn't quite have certain things in place. And in this video, I'm really going to set up a real difference between the perspectives of a long-term investor where the value is with this company, yes, now and into the future, letting go of the past, okay, letting go of all the things that are misconstrued as being delays or a lack of meeting their numbers. It's not important. It doesn't matter. In the short term, we are getting our mind wrapped around and some of these other YouTubers as well that are, have been doing a good job, um, like myself, of providing an awareness message on Hylion. I've said over the course of my investing in the company, I'm a bull on the company. You can be a bear. Um, you can hate me for liking the company. You can love me for liking the company. Doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the question is to invest or not to invest in this company, okay? You can come up with all kinds of reasons. I should have done this in the 50s. I should be doing this now. He's wrong, you're wrong. She's wrong, I'm right. This, that, and everything else under the sun. The fact of the matter is, right now, at this current juncture, the company has just proposed a ton of nuggets to the investor community, and none of it is getting its due attention. And that's what I hope to uh, define for you guys in the course of making this video is the difference between an analyst downgrade of a stock, right? Basically saying that the cop company is going to cease to exist. All the momentum that's been started is going to 
cease to exist. All the new company hires are going to cease to exist. All of the relationships, the networks that have been built and fortified over the last many, many years, even before coming to uh, the SPAC process to come to public markets like they did last fall, all of that is going to be severed and it's going to cease to exist, right? I contend that if an analyst was going to be right on the stock from the very get-go, then they would have just put a 6 to $8 price tar target on the stock and just come out with it and earmarked reasons A, B, and C. Here it is. That I would have given credence to. The problem I have is on one hand, downgrading the stock, while the very company that you work for owns 80,000 shares of the company. That's the problem that I have. And that is why I have lost all credibility. Not that I had a whole lot of stock um, in individual analyst ratings because they all work off of an agenda, all of them. Uh, I follow Morningstar and I follow a couple other rating agencies. It certainly has uh, a very small amount of encouragement on a certain thesis that I may look to coin on a company. But as far as individual analysts, I, I honestly think they're doing it for publicity and there's no publicity like negative publicity. And I think this individual uh, analyst should be held accountable uh, for the downgrade that was just issued on this company, even prior to reported fiscal earnings, the very thing that they are going to reach for and put into their bear case thesis for downgrading this for an undetermined amount of time, they will be right until they are proven wrong. And from the independent investor community, somebody who's been doing this eat, breathing and sleeping, stock market investing, um, they are currently in the short term right and I'm 100% certain that in the long term will be proven 100% wrong. So you're going to want to stick around and check this deep dive of the corporate presentation of my biggest stock holding in my portfolio, which is highly on holdings right now, guys. Stay tuned. We're going to jump right into it. do a lot of things to provide uh, different angles of content through my social media opportunity. I want you guys to remember that uh, I retain the rights to do any type of conduit that I want for my live streaming, my promotional content, content that I do on companies that are, are really aimed at providing awareness. I think Hylion has flown under the radar. There's no doubt in my mind. It doesn't even get named in some of the articles that I read about the electric vehicle space. And I know that Hylion is not a pure play electric vehicle play. However, it does deserve the right to be listed in the likes of those companies that are pursuing a, a greener future, okay, to reduce the carbon footprint. Hylion needs to be in the mix. And, and I find it interesting how either purposely they are left out of conversations they are not mentioned when their earnings call come up i know there was a lot of people that were uh, alarmed a little bit by the last um, earnings report the little bit of delay until the 24th uh, that bothers me not um, that it's irrelevant at this point and i think we're putting way way too much weight uh, on on the backs of a report that is uh, um, going to give status updates on the progress that's been made thus far, um, that of which I, I think has, is, is in, incredible. The, this company is expanding in, in every capacity, okay? If you want to go try to put together a pickup game, a flag football, it's going to take you 15 minutes minimum to, to get things organized, to get the teams picked, to get the rules, the, the ground rules, the policies and procedures right in place to carry out said flag football game. These guys are building a multi-billion dollar company here. And I find it interesting, the push-pull between the bears and the bulls um, in evaluating this fine company. And I think we're missing the point. I really do. I just completed a, a vacation across from Virginia to Tennessee. 
And I couldn't help but notice all of the Schneider trucks on the road, all of the Wegmans trucks on the road, all of the Werner trucks on the road, all of the agility vehicles on the road. I could not, could not help but to notice how many trucks out there uh, are in, um, in operation now. Ruan stuck out to me. You want to know who they were hauling, guys? Publix. Every single truck that I saw from Ruan, who is part of the Innovation Council with Hylion, was pulling Publix. And I really think that you need to look between the noise at this company if you're really going to get the full uh, impact of what you're investing in. And I know there's a lot of people who say it's a terrible investment now. The, 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 the problem I have with that is the rationale for that in that what they're doing now doesn't justify the means down the line, a sentiment that I could completely disagree with. Um, because the has this, time. this guy is going to be made out to be an absolute fool. And I honestly hope that his uh, brash, short-term uh, downgrade of this company, I just don't understand why he's so interested in this company. If he feels like it's worth downgrading three times in the last six months, right, when his parent company owns, what is it, around just shy of 80,000 shares of the company, worth about $1.5 million. I don't, I don't understand that type of dynamic. And I think it's a situation where he's going to win in either case, right? If he ends up being right and the stock ends up going sub eight, I found it interesting on the day of downgrade that the stock was actually up significantly because I actually think that that's institutional buyers saying, you know what, it could go to six, but it could also double to 12 or 16 really, really quick, because here's the thing, it, it's worth it's worth it. And the, the real dynamic is going to be when this thing jumps and the buying euphoria starts, it's going to be a heck of a lot more valid now on its second trip to $58 a share than it was the first time. Because right now, there's some serious fundamentals going on with this company. And I'm going to highlight it in this because on the independent investor channel I put out content when and how I want I do promotional content for certain companies that of which I get paid a significant amount of money to do Hylion is the only one that I push out informational content on because I think it's that important of an opportunity for folks to really really put their head up and listen and understand what these guys are doing behind the scenes. So with that, we're going to get into the presentation here and really walk through a deep dive of the newest release uh, on the corporate presentation that Hylion has just released. Uh, just for anybody out there that wants the solution right at the top of the Hylion video, the only solution in this company, and I really want you to listen up because once you get this key takeaway, then you, you can move away from the video if you're not really that interested in what I'm going to discuss in depth in this video, in that if you are looking to invest in this company, the only way to do so now is long. Okay, what that means is if you're looking to buy the stock now, sell the stock next week, you may make a little bit, you may lose a little bit. I, I, I'm, I'm not in that camp. OK, I know there's a lot of people out there that are upset because they didn't sell in the 58s, yada, yada, this and that. I, I, I get it. OK, this has always been a long term investment from the beginning. It has never, ever been one of those things to where they were going to push out a product prematurely and it was going to run to the moon for you. And and lo and behold, you're the greatest investor of all time. OK. Stock market investing does not work that way, okay? especially in a company like this. If you want to buy a company that sells a bunch of garbage and widgets online, you can go buy Wish. Okay, They sell a bunch of formed plastic to people for overpriced margins, and, and, that's, and that's great. You may end up getting what, what it is that you ordered. You may not. Okay, Hylion is a completely different quality type of uh, assurer, completely different. Why do you think they started the Hypertrucks Innovation Council? Okay, if we're going to value this company in a manner that Mr. Delaney and Goldman Sachs wants us to value the company, then basically we would put zero value in what I'm going to talk to you right now is 
that during the first quarter highlights is where the value is at, okay? And it's very, very convenient to foot stomp areas where the value has not been realized yet in a pre-revenue company like Hylion. And it's very, very convenient to say that somehow they're not going to make do on any of the value propositions that Hylion is coming forward with, okay? Right now, the company is, is uh, being valued at less now than uh, three times the cash that's on the books, okay? Let's highlight some of the things here. Team growth and facility expansion. We'll get into the details of that into the presentation. Hybrid installs and improvements. The and improvements piece is something that you could have never, ever envisioned reading the first corporate presentation from Hylion when it was a SPAC, okay? You could have never, ever been able to discern that the hybrid system, although a great idea and very, very undeniable on the results that it can turn back for a fleet owner, uh, there have been vast improvements to the product in the V2, the version two of the hybrid system that they're looking to roll out and recognize revenue on said systems in latter 2021. Guys, that's less than that's about a little over six months away from now. If you can't wait six months, you do not even deserve to have an awareness piece provided to you on this company, let alone take a position in this company. Now, I will caveat that statement in saying this. A lot of idiots will make a lot of money with Hylion, and there will be a lot of very good investors that make money with Hylion and also lose money with Hylion, okay? That's just the, the, the nature of the game, okay? The stock market does not discriminate, okay? If you're willing to see what it is that I see with the value proposition in the long term, there will be people that make money with this company, but it won't be at a time that you deem appropriate. It will be at a time when Hylion deems appropriate enough to be recognized by the market, be accepted by the market, and what I feel is going to be the real catalyst and what's not being valued properly with Hylion is the value in connections and the network. The value in connections and the network is immense. These guys are basically, with the Innovation Council, helping Hylion rapid pace through a, a research and development so that they can bring this thing to a scaled production faster than you could have ever expected in the manufacturing and logistics space. This stuff takes time. It takes time in certification. It takes time in research and development. It takes time in acquiring new customers. They're on rapid pace to basically fast track each one of those aspects, okay? Now, again, this is a, a, an area of the company that Mr. Delaney wants to conveniently forget when writing a third downgrade in the last six months. This guy has got to be embarrassed. Like, I like to take some confidence in knowing that what I do for a living, I'm really, really good at. There has to be alternative motives. There just has to be by nature of the status quo now that we have. Goldman Sachs owns 80,000 shares of the company. So what gives? I'll leave that rhetorical question to you. ERX key milestones. This is key right here in the Peterbilt identification, Peterbilt chassis being delivered to Hylion. Uh, the first tanks are already being installed as we speak here mid-May, okay? So you don't think ladder 2021 is going to be exciting? If you're not excited about this company, I would just kindly invite you to leave the opportunity. It's very, very simple. Investing does not require emotion, and it especially doesn't require this giddy idea that somehow it's going to work out next week or we need to stare at the stock price every day. This earnings report, I'm going to say something very, very controversial. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in the least freaking bit. And every single opportunity that Thomas Healy is taking here, just like he's done from the beginning, when talking about other CEOs, when talking about his own company, when talking about the realistic opportunity with the company, the challenges that exist therein, he has always opted to take the high road in every single situation. And the last thing I want to see 
is for this young CEO to change course on that application. If I'm investing in a company, I want stability, okay? If you're going to be a little bit slower than what the market anticipates for your product rollout, then all I want is some validation at some point to understand the substantiation behind and the justification behind said delays in product delivery and the rollout of the demo models and when they're looking to realize revenues. Now, this investor presentation alludes to all of that. So this investor presentation is absolutely the best that has been rolled out by Hylion, and I highly encourage you guys, if you're interested in the company, if you're an investor or not, this is the nuts and bolts of what you need to find to identify where they are right now, and more importantly, where they are going. It does not matter where they have been, and quite frankly, it doesn't really matter what is going on right now. As an investor, we need to be focused on where this company could potentially grow. Now remember, according to Delaney, where they are going is nowhere. Where they are going is nowhere. You must sell the stock now because the company will go nowhere. The company has gone evidently somewhere in the past. But remember, the past doesn't matter. Everything that has transpired up to this point basically means nothing and that Hylion will hit an all stop and therefore it makes it a sell right now uh, in the stock price and the company will go nowhere. If that's your thesis, you are entitled to that thesis. It is one that I do not share in and it is one that I'm absolutely ying and yang on. Delaney's the ying, I'm the freaking yang. That's just the way of it. Again, I would love to be able to look in the mirror at the end of the day and say I'm actually good at my job. I'll leave that one alone. All right. The Hypertruck Innovation Council goes without saying. Anybody who's interested in catching this video knows how big that is for the reasons that I just suggested in fast tracking their way to the receipt of data, that of which they've already got millions of road miles on this product and to get the actual insight from the drivers through the actual uh, boards. Now, the boards are going to be looking at the money. The drivers are going to be looking at the practical application piece to this. How accessible is the fueling infrastructure? How available is it to troubleshoot problems on the road? Is there a backup type of setup that they could potentially put in place? How easy is it to troubleshoot if they do end up having uh, a, an issue on the road where the truck is broke down on the side of the road? This is what I want out of it. Do I want them to be ramrodding product through right now that we are not for sure uh, is going to go out and perform in its optimal manner? That's what Thomas Healy is after here through the Innovation Council. And I hope each and every investor in this company truly understands that they that should be in their best interest right now. Not jamming the stock to 15 or 20 to make everybody feel good right now. The stock price is disconnected from the company. I want you guys to understand that if the stock price is going to perform, the company has to follow suit here and there needs to be that catalyst. And I've got a few earmarked into my future, but we are way, way too premature by at least a couple months, at least a couple months. Now, Thomas Healy has alluded to giving some insight on the progress of the ERX, the chassis, the installs, everything that's going on right now. That stuff is happening right now, guys, happening right now. So, that is not the catalyst that I speak of. The catalyst that I speak of is when we start to experience some of the real world return on data from the driver perspective. In other words, how useful is this product? And then the bottom line savings. How amazing is that going to be to have Anheuser-Busch sit on their quarterly conference call and talk about the bottom line savings from Hylion. You don't think that that's going to uh, create some churn in the industry and provide that fast-tracked network connection that Hylion is working so hard to establish? You guys are crazy. 
perhaps maybe I'm the one that's crazy if I'm the one seeing this as an opportunity uh, and, and, and everybody else is going to be right in that this stock is going to cease to exist and the company is going to set a all, all stop on these 2021 highlights that are earmarked here. And then the RNG growth and impact. We will get into details on that as renewable natural gas is enormous. The last five years, we've got over a 500% increase in the use of RNG as a fuel. Very exciting stuff. The one company that is looking to leverage that opportunity in RNG and its impact or potential reduce of the carbon footprint and emissions uh, in response to what is going to be foreseen tightening and continued pressure on logistics and shipping companies uh, to respond to uh, a, 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 a greener footprint in their application is going to be huge. Now, I've seen a lot of people nitpick highly on in this. This is a huge, huge for me. Um, I want them to acquire talent, and I would go out on a limb and say that this is probably the most difficult thing to, to do when you're building a new company, and, and there's going to be some churn here. Not everybody that they pick up is going to be a good fit for Hylion, but as Hylion starts to improve their reputation as a place that is a, a, a workplace that is conducive to uh, a long-term career, you know, getting uh, involved in a company like this on the ground floor is not easy, okay? There's got to be some really, really devoted um, new employees that are stepping on to the Hylion and looking to take it to, to the next level. Now, for those folks that do end up taking this this new um, project uh on initially, uh, the, the promotion opportunity is going to be at its greatest now than it will in the future as Hylion starts to establish its reputation. But the facility expanding to 120,000 square feet, that, that's great. Here's the thing. The, the, the beauty and the silver lining, again, that, that Mr. Delaney says has no value, is the fact that they are already partnered with the OEMs. They're done. Thomas Healy has spoke about this strategically in Nook interviews that he's done, and it's not very well understood that the OEM hubs is the key to this. They don't need to go and reinvent the wheel. They don't need to go purchase blank land and, and, and look to establish a super uh, facility out of thin air. They don't need to, okay? Okay. They already have existing infrastructure. They partner with and they collaborate with the existing OEMs to allow for the OEM hub to take the chassis off the line, transfer it over to the hub, and install the hybrid system. Now, this is going to be key in that I read a recent presentation that was made available by a poster in my uh, th uh, thread that I follow for Hylion. His name is Christopher. At least he goes by the screen name Christopher. Very, very interesting uh, investor presentation that they were able to find on the actual chassis itself being designed from the OEM to accept the hybrid system install. There's been a lot of questions about the potential for uh, null and void of um, taking an existing chassis and putting on an exist uh, a, a retrofit type of hybrid system on an existing chassis. Now, I don't have that answer back from Hylion yet. I've emailed them and asked them about this, and I have not been responded to just yet. I do anticipate either getting uh, this response from them or speaking to uh, Thomas Healy directly uh, when I have the chance to interview him. With that said, this is for the new hybrid uh, installs that are going to be turned out of the OEM lines. And all they have to do is select a hybrid ready chassis that can be turned out on the OEM, system installed, boom, bang, good to go. This is going to be my question for Thomas Healy. How are they going to uh, accept the level of scale up necessary to meet the anticipated demand on said products going into 2022, 2023, and 2024. That's going to be my interest because the demand is going to increase and the amount of output is going to increase. My question is put quite simple. Is Hylion 
uh, prepared to accept that rapid and dynamic growth into the coming years? That's going to be my question. If you're upset by thus far having installed 10 hybrid units, just sh sell your shares and get out of the company. Okay. If they meet a projection of 150 uh, hybrid installs in 2021, that will be 150 shy of their projected 300 in their original corporate pre presentation. I would invite you, if that's what you want, to sell the shares because if that's what happens, the stock will probably go down because the stock is looking for any excuse to go down at this point, okay? And if they sell 320 units, the stock will probably go down as well because they will come up with every excuse as to why they won't be able to scale up to the next milestone in hybrid installs. Let me tell you what's actually important here. What is not important is the number of sales in 2021. Highly unknew this, okay? What is important is completed. It's done. Winter testing and validation. Data acquired, data done, data incorporated into V2 of the hybrid system. Fantastic. Continued improvements to the hybrid platform. That's what I'm alluding to, V2, okay? That is going to be incorporated in the final version once they start to ramp up production after they are 100% confident in the product that they are turning out. One of their two flagship products, I might add, is going to perform in a manner that can be articulated. It can be sold upon. It can be discussed during sales uh, calls. Uh, and it can be relied upon as being a bottom line data point to know how it's going to perform before it's put into service in the first place. Once those validations are complete after they've been put into service, then we can start to quantify the bottom line impact to the Hylion solution to the company's balance sheets. Not Hylion, but the companies that they're taking on. In this particular case, Green Path Logistics, which is part of the Innovation Council. It is a member of and a long-term supporter of Hylion and their initiative to do what it is they need to do. The big key takeaway here is expect revenue recognition to begin in the second half of 2021. There it is, right there. Expected revenue recognition. Fantastic. I don't want the revenue recognized until they get this system dialed in, ready to rock. And in this slide, a picture tells a thousand words. That is a final end product. This is what we've got. Now, according to Mr. Delaney, this is going to stop and cease to exist. No more hybrid units will be turned out to fleets at all. It doesn't matter what Green Path Logistics says. It doesn't matter about their networks of connections. It doesn't matter about the amount of bottom line quantifiable benefit back to the company. Uh, they must not have known what they were doing. They should have listened to Mr. Delaney on his downgrade of Hylion, and they shouldn't have put these 10 units in place because the cost benefit is going to be zero going forward. Now, I speak like this because that is what the downgrade of Hylion calls for in that the company, again, will hit all of its brakes and will continue to, and will cease to continue to move forward uh, at the momentum that they've been able to provide momentum for over the last year of being uh, available through the public markets. It's coming public through the SPAC. And I think especially since it's turned out last fall, being a publicly traded company has created an immense amount of momentum from a company perspective, but the stock has not failed to recognize that, nor has the street, uh, nor have uh, the uh, analysts who cover the stock, I, I keep earmarking Mr. Delaney because he's the one who seemingly uh, stays up nights writing about Hylion and being infatuated with this company. Uh, honestly, I find that infatuation somewhat interesting in that if he's so interested in the company, then he probably has some sort of insight into the long-term perspectives of this company. In other words, he's kind of biting the hand that feeds him Goldman Sachs, right? So I find this interesting how all of this progress that's been rendered in 2021 with projected revenues, expected revenues, that, that, that of which the company is getting zero credit for, zero. Remember, 
At $8.60, where the stock is trading at right now, it's being valued at about $1.4 billion as a company, okay? That's less than three times the cash that they have currently on the books right now, okay? So just a little bit of perspective there in understanding what camp you lie in. Are, are you in the camp that thinks that the company is going to cease to exist, go out of business, and not install any more hybrid units with everything that they've got going on? I, I, I would say if that's your decision, you're free to not enter the stock as a new position or sell out of your company right now, and, and you and Mr. Delaney can hold hands onto the horizon and be right on this company. Here's the thing. Mr. Delaney has wrote this downgrade to be right in both situations because technically his assessment to the company right now is conveniently, conveniently right. I will not say that he's been right on this company all the way through. If he was going to be right on the company, then why didn't he just come out and downgrade the company and put a price target of $8 on the company right when it was initially uh, um, covered, right? You can't just conveniently scale down your price target in such a, 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 a short amount of time when the very thing that this company needs is time in and of itself. I said that at the very top of this presentation. If you're looking to invest in the company, it is going to take time. The only solution to the day-to-day, week-to-week volatility in Hylion is to buy the company and hold it for the long term. That's it. That's where the max profits are going to be realized to this company because trying to pick your entry and your exits is going to be way, way too difficult on this because they are moving at such an accelerated pace. It's just going to take one catalyst and it's probably going to be a catalyst that moves the stock that neither I nor Mr. Delaney nor any of the devoted Helion heirs out there and YouTube community is going to be able to forecast before the stock moves anyway and it's going to catch a lot of people with their pants down there's no doubt in my mind this this is the freaking greatest slide ever in the history of freak this is insane guys god damn this is something else man it's so funny the disconnect between what people see in this company and what what i see now this is publicly available information but is it going to make you happy if a bunch of units and widgets are sold off the line quickly and the stock goes back up to 10, 15, 20? I don't, I don't know. Those are arbitrary figures, that of which I put very little to no value on at this particular juncture because here's where the value is. Now, uh, comparatively speaking, again, with the downgrade and the stock being heavily shorted, I believe we're still at about 20% of the shares uh, being shorted, which is, is fine. You need to be able to operate in the big leagues. It's a publicly traded company now, and there are sharks in the water. And I don't fault those efforts at all because, quite frankly, it's legal. And they don't care about the company itself. They only care about the stock. Okay, they'll manipulate the stock down enough to where they can enter into huge positions. And that's what's going on right now. Institutions are saying, what's the difference between five and eight? What's the difference? The upside potential is massive, massive. Let's just buy the shares now. And that's exactly what institutions are buying. But data per truck, one gigabyte of data per truck, all that rolls into drafting the final algorithms of the proprietary systems that they have here um, for um, the uh, onboard monitoring system. Now, this was quoted uh, back when, before Hylion, just after it came um, public as a SPAC. Uh, Dana, actually, of, of all companies, was quoted to say, this is where the value in Hylion is. Their hardware, fantastic. Their ability to outsource and bring in product and put the hybrid system in motion is great. The Hypertruck ERX is going to be great. But this right here, this is really what separates Hylion from the rest of the crowd, is their proprietary algorithmic system to build a smarter truck. This is going to provide data to companies that they never had before, driver tendencies, uh, how the truck reacts in cold and warm weather, how the truck reacts to terrain. All that stuff is being turned back by the little squiggly lines there that you see there. Those are highly on routes. Now, again, not to pick on Mr. Delaney. Actually, yeah, I do mean to pick on Mr. Delaney because this is my YouTube channel and I can say whatever the hell I want. That's why people tune in to me because I, I give the dirt. I do. I say what a lot of people are thinking, okay? 
these routes are going to disappear, right? So these routes are going to cease to exist. Trucks are going to stop all together, and there's going to be a little red dot on the end of each one of these green spaghetti lines on the map here, according to Mr. Delaney. And the data is going to stop being received. The algorithms are going to stop being built. The trucks are going to stop physically moving down the road using the Hylion solutions. Thank you, Mr. Delaney. I just do not see it your way. I don't. What's going to continue to happen is, is that the advances that are captured during this data collection mode, and this is exactly why Tesla carries the value that it does. It's because of the data collected over the road by each and every one of their units out there as data collection points uh, for the extrapolator, which in that case is Tesla. In this case, it's going to be highly on which is going to be able to turn back as a value proposition for the very truck owners and the truck fleet and logistics managers that can extrapolate this data and align certain trucks, certain driver tendencies with certain terrain, certain weather parameters, certain conditions uh, in line with where those fueling stations are. And they can just build a smarter route. They can build a smarter logistics company. And, and that's really where the value is. And, and that's more of the yang uh, aside that I'm on rather than Mr. Delaney being on kind of the yin. And all of this is going to cease to exist here right now. It, it's not going to exist. We have to downgrade the stock right now. And this is going to not exist anymore based on what Hylion is telling us right in front of us is in fact going on right now. And not only are we expected to get the demo units turned out latter half of 2021, but the demo units are currently being built. As we speak at the filming of this video, um, all that is looking to come to an end according to the analyst downgrade of the company. I beg to differ. I would rather go off of what uh, I've been able to publicly derive from this company on what's going on behind the scenes. And I will be uh, continue to be a proud stock owner in this company as stock ownership in any company uh, requires that the value of said assets improve over time. If you don't think that said assets are improving with what's being declared in this corporate presentation, th then again, I invite you to sell the stock, don't take a new position in the stock, um, or, or continue to uh, uh, come up with a thesis as to why this will not continue. And the choice is completely yours. I've already made my choice. I already know where I'm going. I, I'm very confident and, and um, reflective of the uh, position that I've built here basing with a cost basis of around 13 and a half or so. So we're a little down on our cost basis that we've been able to achieve here with the current um, swoon in the stock, but value proposition nonetheless over the long term. Highly on is light speed ahead of Nikola, light speed. And quite frankly, their light speed, again, uh, uh, um, ahead of Tesla. The, the real disconnect between the two companies, Tesla and Nikola, that seem to have market favor at this point, Hylion is being left for dead on the side of the road. I think that's a real mistake. I do. And I'm calling it right now. I have no problem coming onto a public forum and saying that uh, the market has this wrong. They have it wrong. And... That's the stock market nowadays, and I think the great uh, equalizer in the stock market now today's is that the availability of information gives the um, retail investor much more of an advantage and a disadvantage at the same time. The advantage comes from getting a hold of credible sources of information and making an informed decision based on those uh, credible uh, reports like this one, the one that I'm rolling out to you. The disadvantage, unfortunately, is that people can go onto social media and say anything that they want. They really can. Uh, analysts can downgrade a stock for whatever reason they want. That's what they get paid to do. They get paid to cover stock. And that's what's happening right now. Lots of articles will come out one day saying one thing positive about the stock and one day negative about the stock. When in all reality, you could just ignore all of that information unless you're looking to read it for entertainment purposes only, 
okay? These are as close to uh, um, an accurate assessment on what's going on with the company here. Now, I don't know what Nikola is planning to do. Hylion has um, uh, partnered with Peterbilt, which have been building chassis and trucks for many, many decades. So I'm not really sure I understand why Nikola and Tesla get the nod to say that they can just build a truck from the ground up, whereas Hylion has taken what has been evolved in research and development over time. You cannot sit there and tell me that that is not important. The science and engineering that goes into what they've been able to learn over the last decades of building chassis. I couldn't have th thought of a better company to partner with than Peterbilt. And Peterbilt has stepped up and said, yeah, we're, we're in here on this slide. It took delivery of Peterbilt trucks to be upfitted with the Hyperdruck ERX powertrain. Couldn't be happier. Fantastic music to my ears. I hardly, hardly would suggest that all of this is going to somehow cease to exist and therefore Hylion is going to be stuck holding the cash on the books and not be able to push this momentum forward with what they've got going on here. So the commercialization 2021 demo units will be delivered later 2021. It's going to be exciting next six months going into latter part of this year and moving into 2022 and 2023, which is where a lot of this can really start to uh, become evident on the value proposition when it comes to market and they can scale up with a product that they can say, hell yeah, hell yeah, we've got the data, we've got the mechanics, and we've got all of the equipment ready to rock to push forward the best solution that we possibly can to the industry and start to mass scale this up as we go forward. When you read the Hylion corporate presentation, you have to actually read it, okay? And I don't know if the analysts who are downgrading this company actually read this. I, I think basically what they do is they have a very good imagination and they can come up with things and they can or come up with a thesis on the company, and then they can write the narrative to meet that thesis. That's what I think, okay? And what I've found out by looking at these corporate presentations, this being the third, I believe, version of the corporate presentation, this being the most streamlined one, I might add, here, uh, the most recent one that's been uh, released, collaboration to advance path to commercial commercialization. I don't think they could have said it anymore. When you talk about opportunity and you talk about value proposition, look at what that statement basically says. A future-focused fleet and technology leaders. That's what they are. Now, the Innovation Council, according to a certain sum, would say that this has no value whatsoever, representing over 100,000 Class 8 commercial trucks globally. I just beg to differ. The council members will be first to operate the Hypertruck ERX. Unbelievable. To be able to plug your truck into 10 feelers, 10 networks. Imagine if each of these 10 uh, council members were able to put up a thousand Hypertruck order per year, right? Just imagine how huge that would be. How that would set the precedence in the industry going forward and how now these companies, these 10, have a strategic ace up their sleeve to hit their bottom line in a positive way and also be able to say that they were the first forward leaning in the industry to take these initiatives to the next level. You're going to have other companies falling all over themselves. The demand is going to increase so incredible. It's not going to be about them selling units anymore. It's going to be about how quickly they can fill orders and meet the overwhelming demand that's created by this innovation council. That's the key takeaway here. It's not about selling X number of units right now. Again, I come back to my thesis. If you want to own the stock and you want to make the long-term the long money that is available here to be made, then 
you have to own the stock and nothing more, okay? No fretting, no being sad, no being happy. Just own the goddamn stock. That's it. Very simple. So this slide right here really makes me question why Nikola isn't a penny stock right now. I, I don't understand why they have the nod to be jumping right to the hydrogen fuel cell solution because there's such a push to make that pipe dream a reality right now. Right now, it is a pipe dream, okay? There is no infrastructure in place whatsoever to support that on a mass scale. They are trying to bite off way, way too much. Uh, Hylion actually has a physical building where they're building out a team, a physical product to sell to people. They say that once they go to the fuel agnostic option that the hydrogen fuel cell can be used to actually power the onboard generator and then eventually move to a hydrogen fuel cell with zero tailpipe emissions uh, once the infrastructure is available to the trucking fleets. But you remember the green spaghetti map that I showed you? Those are all running off of compressed natural gas as we speak right now, renewable natural gas. So the solution today speaks to the opportunity today. Now, this timeline I find ironic how Hylion strategically did not put a time frame on this, okay? Thomas Healy has spoke about this on his interviews, and he's basically said we could be five years away, we could be 10 years, we could be beyond 10 years. Who knows? Who cares? Honestly, when the time comes, Hylion will be well positioned to have their solutions out there in the hands of fleet and a very, very simple adoption to hydrogen fuel cell from renewable natural gas. And it's not going to just be an ole. We, we, we basically shut down an entire fueling infrastructure and move completely to hydrogen fuel cell. There's some very, very specific roadblocks to entry to hydrogen fuel cell. Where are you going to produce it? How is it going to be produced? What's the cost of producing producing the hydrogen to fuel the cells? So I think it's going to be appropriate for certain routes, but not all routes. And that's why I think there's going to be multiple solutions out there that are available for companies like Nikola. I just don't understand why the company holds such a high market cap right now when the opportunity is just not there. When fleets look at the opportunity to actually physically pull their truck over to the side of the road and get fuel, it's not there. It's not there. That's why I call it a pipe dream at this particular point. And I don't understand at all why it catches favor in the marketplace, basically speaks to the imperfect stock market. Sooner or later, there's going to be an impasse where Hylion actually surpasses the value of Nikola and, and continues upward when the value proposition is actually realized uh, in the company. But here it is, the transition from renewable natural gas to hydrogen fuel cell down the line. When that happens, who the hell knows? Who the hell knows? But you put your bets where you want. My bets with Hylion and with the network and how rooted in they're going to be with customers and how they should be able to win over and get established customers in this march to a greener future, a lower emissions future. It's going to be a very, very simple transition from RNG to hydrogen fuel cell if they've already got those networks established. And I highly, highly would be skeptical of Nikola's ability to come in and win over those customers after they've got years of precedent with an already established company, that company being Hylion. Something I want you guys to keep in mind when you look at a company like Hylion and something that if I can just impart to you my vision for this company and why I'm so bullish on the company, um, why my thesis has been unwavered in, in my application, um, my establishment of my stock position in the company, as well as my long call positions uh, in Hylion, it is because of its real impact. It's real impact and its ability to speak about the real impact from cradle to grave. So the real takeaway from this is the real impact. Real impact from cradle to grave. What do I mean by that? Thomas Healy does a great job of explaining the cost of production of electricity for full electric vehicles, 
the cost associated with what is perceived to be the wave of the future in uh, hydrogen fuel cell. However, the infrastructure at such a huge cost uh, to produce and the unavailability of said hydrogen fuel cell at the current juncture. This speaks to the RNG growth over the last uh, few decades anyway. And you can see there the operational projects, how it's grown over time, and then the new projects that have cropped up 2020 uh, being the highest in the last 20 years for recognizing RNG as a viable fuel source uh, and, and whether or not these trends are going to increase over time, well, that's what I'm betting on. I'm betting on these trends actually improving over time as really being one of those fuels that needs to be made available for the trucks right now that are using CNG, RNG for predominantly the shorter routes based on the problem now with realizing the extra horsepower needed uh, for incline hauls and for heavier load hauls and there not being a solution on the market right now uh, for class 8 long haul heavy load tandem trailer uh, shipping uh, in the industry until the hybrid system came along and that's exactly what that is meant to uh, solve in the hy uh, hydrogen solution. That's why Hylion is looking to exploit that RNG growth here depicted on this slide. This is the wake the hell up slide. This is the wake the hell up, Mr. Delaney. This is the wake the hell up worldwide governments, the U.S. government. I find would be extremely disappointed if Hylion doesn't have something in the works um, with the U.S. government to address the problem that we all know exists. It's right there in front of our face. What I find interesting in today's world is that we find all kinds of funny stuff to throw money at, but when the solution is staring us right in the freaking face, we fail to acknowledge it. And this right here is the wake the hell up slide. This is what I consider to be, and I would encourage you all to take away from this presentation, the real impact, the real impact, 100,000 metric tons of greenhouse gases reduced. This is a cross comparison of 50 heavy duty trucks that traveled 100,000 miles per year and Hylion's Hypertruck ERX. These are the savings uh, when a cross comparison of diesel and the potential impact of the ERX truck are put head to head here, what it actually means, 4.7 millions of gallons of fossil fuel is displaced or basically not used, right? Uh, 250 million passenger car miles driven, reduced. It's as if they didn't exist. Or 1.5 million tree seedlings for 10 years. That's, that's after one year, guys. That, that, that's incredible. So the solution is right there. The product is right there. I would highly encourage each and every one of you guys to either take one of the two stances that I disclosed at the top of this video. Either invest or don't invest. That is the question. And if you're going to invest in this, hopefully I've taken the time and the insight to give you my perspective on the newest corporate presentation that Hylion has turned out for your guys' investor knowledge and to make those informed decisions based on the best information available out there. Hopefully, we've done a good job of extrapolating that information for you guys. With that, we'll kick you back and we'll conclude the video. All right, guys, so we've come out of the corporate presentation for Hylion. Um, I would apologize for the length of this video, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I have an hour in making this video that I'll never get back in this. I do this for your benefit. And for those of you guys that don't have an hour to spend on a company that may be a life-changing investment or at least a, an insight to where the direction of the industry is going to reduce the NOx emissions, the carbon uh, emissions that are plaguing the trucking industry right now and they are hungry every single day that goes by they are hungrier and hungrier for a solution that of which Hylion is making that real impact that i talked about during the making of this video 
And if you don't have the time to sit for that and you're too busy in your day-to-day life, that's fine. I, I, I have no problem with that. But it took every bit of an hour for me to get a point across on each and every bullet point on what this company is doing. And they're being judged on everything right now that is not important. Why aren't they rushing? Why don't they have orders? Why don't they have this? Why don't they have that? Instead of focusing on the real value proposition that at some point is going to give this company a value burst. And the network is going to prove the viability of this company. And whether or not it happens next week or next month or six months down the line, I don't know. What I said in this video is this. Hylion will probably reach that catalyst at a time when neither me nor anybody else in the YouTube community, nor the smarty pants analysts out there trying to cover the stock and play games with downgrading the stock when their parent company owns a huge share base in the company, none of that malarkey matters. None of it matters. What it comes down to is, do you want to invest or do you not want to invest in the company? And I've basically told you in this video, the only way to guarantee yourself the longest success from a money perspective in this company is to invest in the company and hold it long. Very, very simple. It's the simplest solution that I can offer to you. It allows you to avoid the noise. It allows you to scrutinize all the garbage out there, all the propaganda, the convenient omitting of Hylion from the discussion as being a premier player in this space I find this interesting, and the chips are going to fall one of these days here shortly when Hylion starts to realize some of the specifics that I touched on in the corporate presentation in this video in highlighting this awareness piece for what I feel like is one of the best opportunities that I've ever seen in the stock market to watch, monitor, perhaps maybe yes, even invest in, but you have to do it for the right reasons. And I tell you what, retail investors, like I said in the video, are at a disadvantage and an extreme advantage all at the same time. You just have to determine what information out there you find is fact-based, is based with a, 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 without an agenda, right? And is offered with some level of neutrality with regard to where they are, where they've been, what momentum has started, and where the hell they are going. Guys, I appreciate you tuning into the message. Now make sure and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Make sure you share the message with anybody out there you know is interested in getting involved with or invested in Hylion Holdings. Fantastic coverage of the newest corporate presentation laid down by the Independent Investor Channel. Really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and staying with me through the totality of this message. Guys, thank you so much again and good luck in your investment future.